Hello and welcome to another crypto and wine or alternative today. We are here with Jason Stone. <laughs> Jason Stone, the millionaire mentor on Instagram, guys. He has over 8 million followers. Um, but Jason doesn't like wine. <laughs> so today... I'm like, I don't really drink that much wine, but when we go out, it's always tequila. So it's the tequila. We're going to so... do tequila and wine. No, not tequila. tequila. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even have a shot yet. Okay, so it's crypto and tequila. Crypto and tequila today. You can't mix wine and tequila. No, that's bad news. So we're gonna have this. He's gonna tell you guys about the, the tequila because I actually, don't really know. Actually, Espolón is actually a tequila. Actually, all tequila is made in Mexico. Which and this is, a, you know, it's not one of my favorite brands, Don Julio. Uh, it's one of my favorite brands. Plus, uh, we got uh, Casa de Dragones, Casa Azul. So, you want to do the honors? Uh, I can try. Pre-opened. There we go. So we're gonna have. We're missing the salt and the. Straight up. But it's just not chill. Okay, for me, how much would you like? The whole A full thing. The whole thing. He goes hard. <laughs> okay. Go hard. Not to crypto. Not tequila. <laughs> All, All right. right. Cheers. Cheers. To crypto. To crypto. Making millions. Making all those gains with the bull run this year. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Bitcoin to 200k. Woo! Do you like it? Trying to make the face? <laughs> What's the face? The tequila face. What's the tequila face? Oh! <laughs> I thought that was the line of the one, yeah, but yeah, it's the tequila. I'm proud, I'm proud of her, she didn't make a face. I, no, I've gotten, because when you hang out with Jason, you've got to learn to uh, love the tequila, so I'm getting used to not doing the face. All right. Let's, Let's get to crypto. it. <laughs> so um, Jason has been in crypto for quite some time now, um, and in the trading world even longer. Um, when did you get started in crypto? When was your first crypto exposure? I first got exposed to crypto when I would like wanted to buy something on the Silk Road. On the Silk Road? <laughs> the Silk Road. You know the Silk Road? That's the Silk Road. So that was the anonymous marketplace. It was the first anonymous marketplace you can buy drugs, guns, liquor. I mean, uh, whatever. Are we allowed to buy drugs? Yeah. Aren't you? That's fine. I, just, I said <laughs> I'm just it. Playing. Anyways. Yeah. Right. I'm not gonna say yeah. what I wanted to buy. But anyways, I had to go and buy my Bitcoin and I had to send it to this, the Silk oh. Road. And I think Bitcoin was 300 bucks then. Oh my God. And I bought like five of them. And I only had to spend like one or two at the mm -hmm. time. And I had like three or four left over. Yeah. And I don't know what happened to those three or no four. No way, you lost them? Yeah, I was on a computer. There was a treadstone in the office. I went to the, got thrown out one time. The guys had an old computer oh. sitting on the desk and I just forgot about it. Anyways, but I didn't really think of investing into crypto and Bitcoin that, that back then. It was just to buy something. Yeah. So I wasn't in the mentality to, I want to buy this Bitcoin and invest. That's why I didn't care about it. Wow. Now, you know, now later. Now you wish. <laughs> so 2017 hit yeah. and uh, that's when a lot of people got in mainstream crypto. That's when you saw the big spike up to $20,000. Yeah. And, um, Which we're laughing at now. Yeah, I, I got in, but I actually got out when I was around 12000 Okay. So I pulled out, I'm like, sell, 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 this, this is the top. Because you had bought it at so yeah. low. So it went up, went down, um, and it, and then it went to the, the, the bottom, like four, five, three, 3,500. Yeah, back to 35. And that's when I got back in. So wow. I got back in at 3,800, a lot. And I, it was, those were actually, that's when I really started to start trading it and buying all coins. Yeah, I'm glad you kept going because I think a lot of people, probably the majority of people, myself included, in 2017 when there was the big crash, yeah. just pulled out and we're like, okay, cool, crypto's a scam. Yeah, we, had to wait, uh, we yeah. did have to wait a couple of years for it to pick back up, but now it picked back up. 2018, 19 was dead. Yeah, and, definitely. But I held a bunch of tokens. I remember I told That's you so I found sixty grand in my Binance account. You did. Oh and I think God. I left about five to ten in there at the time. Wow. When I opened it back up, it was fifty grand. So and, and then another wallet that I didn't open for years. Yeah. Another fifty grand. I'm like, wow, this is insane. <laughs> I'm like, Free let's money. get back into crypto. <laughs> so you know, the, all those dormant oh years God. I held all these weird ass random coins, it paid off. So funny because it was the same with me. I was like, oh yay, random like wallets with crypto in it but not that much okay 
<laughs> One day, maybe they'll just, just surprise me, like a wallet that I forgot. But wow, that's crazy. I didn't know that you'd gotten in or had heard about it that early. It was like 2000 Three hundred dollars. Fifteen or fourteen. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, Imagine I wish I would have had the mindset of like, I don't know, okay, what this going to be? It's like the future. It's future technology. I had no idea back then. That's crazy. So. And do you think because I mean now we have like so much knowledge and understanding in crypto, but because we live in it every single day and we're surrounded by people that know crypto and understand crypto and work in crypto, it feels like. It's constant FOMO and as if we're already late. But do you think that like outside of our circle, we still really are early or that there's like really mass, mass adoption happening now and the whole world's getting in? Uh, I think that we are gearing up to that big mass adoption. Yeah. Because it's all over the news. It is. There's Fortune 500 companies investing in Tesla, MicroStrategy. I mean, some yeah. of the biggest holders of Bitcoin are corporations from the United States. Yeah. And you got China. China. <laughs> China. Which <laughs> which banned crypto. Yeah. Again. Uh, they're the biggest holders of crypto. Man, crazy. crazy. Yeah. So I think that mass adoption will start taking place when it's a little bit easier for people to go to the store and spend it. Yeah. And I've always said this for years. I'm like, if we can I think the best crypto plays right now are POS terminals mm -hmm. that are trying to mass adopt the Targets, the Walmarts, the Amazons. Like, what coin is Amazon going to use? Wow. We don't know yet. No. So, those coins right now that are putting crypto in POS terminals for merchants like myself, I have a merchant Treadstone, I would love to swipe someone's credit card. Yeah. And, or they could just send me a, a, bit, a Bitcoin payment. Yeah, or, just or, with or, the coin. Or XRP just... or ADA or whatever. Damn. Whatever becomes the, the coin yeah. that's going to be utilized on those terminals. And that has yet to happen. Wow. So what you think when that happens, then it's really like, okay, now it's like a mainstream, everybody's doing it kind of thing. Yeah. It's when, when, you, when, you, when you can go tap your phone, like Apple Pay is amazing. Yes. Yeah. We all love Apple Pay. <laughs> Bing. Like I don't have a wallet anymore. I don't carry cash anymore. And if uh, the first thing I do when I walk in, do you accept Apple Pay? Wow. It's so it's so convenient. It's like one tap. It is. Yeah. So there's going to be an app on your phone one day where you can just do one tap to somebody and it's going to send crypto. Yeah. And just, that's already the technology's already it's there. It's already there. It's just got to be adapted by everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Like Apple Pay just caught on a couple of years ago. Yeah. So we're in these next couple of years, crypto is going to be catching on. So. If you're watching this, so cool. now is the time for the next bull run. And this next bull run might last six months to a year. It could last two years. We don't know. Uh, but the bear the bear cycle will happen once we reach a peak, I think. Yeah. And we're gonna, we'll go through another 30, 40, maybe 50% retracement. Oh, you think only that? Not another 80% retracement? Like 2017? Yeah. Because it's too much now. Too like, much. Yeah. Yeah. So we had just had a 50% retracement from yes. 63 down to 30. Yeah. Maybe twenty eight ish. So that was a fifty percent. Damn. I don't think well, retracements will be as big as they've been in the past. Yeah. When you look at eighty percent, now it was fifty percent. Maybe the next one will be thirty. A smaller one. Yeah. yeah. Well, sounds like we're still early, which yeah. is crazy. Um, but I wanted to talk today about NFTs because it's a really yeah big hot topic even though i feel like the hype's already starting to like go away and everyone's moving to the metaverse mm -hmm. but i think the two things are very connected anyway um and you're very into nfts i know you're constantly looking at different ones flipping them making money so in general what is an nft to a person that has never heard to explain to like christy okay. your wife i've done this plenty of times <laughs> christy okay. jason's wife doesn't really understand her, so her NFTs. we have to give examples of the use case of what nfts are like yes if you go back to art artwork mm -hmm. let's say the mona lisa yes there's only one mona lisa right well one original one original well, that there, there's been like licensed copies of it, mm -hmm. but let's just say for the original, it's been passed down between artwork holders and collectors many times. So imagine now the Mona Lisa probably does already have an NFT attached to it. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. in order to sell the Mona Lisa, you're going to sell the NFT and that's it. You're not going to pay with cash and pay with wire. I mean, you can pay with wire transfer, but the transfer will happen on the blockchain and the transfer will go to the new holder. So if, piece of artwork um, gets passed along. 
But now what's really cool about it is that the person that made the NFT, I mean, sorry, the artwork, the Mona Lisa, that painted it for the first time, was not a famous artist back then. Exactly. It became famous as time went on. So artists, it's all about how well-known and famous the artist gets for your artwork to change hands and start appreciating. Exactly. So now you it's can't copy the Mona Lisa. Changer. Like you have to yeah. own the digital, digital certificate of authenticity. That's what it is. Right now, yes. the Mona Lisa has a paper certificate, but anybody can knock off a piece of paper. Exactly. And anybody can knock off the Mona Lisa and try to pass it as the real painting. Yeah. So whoever holds the NFT, which is immutable on the blockchain, meaning you can't change it, the digital certificate of authenticity, yeah. that goes with the owner. And it holds in a crypto wallet. I can hold the, the Mona Lisa on my phone right now. That's sick. Cool. So another, another example is, um, let's say rock bands, Kiss mm -hmm. or Nirvana. Yeah. Like Nirvana's guitar Fantastic. is worth millions of dollars or a, his guitar pick is worth hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So what says this guitar pick is the real one? This guitar pick is now gonna get t attached to an NFT, non-fungible token, meaning it's not fungible, it can't change. And now whoever owns the guitar pick will now own the NFT. Yeah. So all memorabilia, all collector's items, all paintings in the future will have NFTs attached We're to them. We're removing all the, the scams, yeah. essentially. Yeah. It's like when you have a digital print of something, you can't go and change it or, yeah, you can't modify it. And if you do modify it, the trace is there. So people know that that's happening. And that happens on the blockchain where you can't change the past. Exactly. So You know exactly where it's gone to who it's gone. And I think another really important thing to emphasize is what you said, like artists in the past, okay, I go and create the Mona Lisa. Nobody knows who I am. I'm not a famous artist. I sell it the first time and I just make the gains mm -hmm. from the first time that I sell them. That's another great use case. Right? That. But now with NFTs, every single time the Mona Lisa is sold, the original artist actually gets a percentage yeah, of that. So that's what's called royalties. Yeah. And you can tie in a set number, 10%, 20%, whatever. Normal is about 10%. So every time the Mona Lisa gets sold at auction, 10% goes back to the original owner. So and that's cool. hard coded in the smart contracts. That's why Ethereum is so big. And I believe Ethereum is going to be the biggest and the baddest coin there is because right, of the, the smart name. contracts. <laughs> the flipping, yeah. That's when your theory is going to take Bitcoin and market cap. Um, so royalties, you can't, there was no royalties anywhere in memorabilia, collector's item, artwork. Yeah. It's ne it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Now it's hard coded into the smart contract with Ethereum. So cool. So yeah. the Mona Lisa's changed hands, I don't know how many times, millions and millions of dollars that artist could have made. Exactly, but they just made it for a first sale yeah. rather than, and I think also for mu music artists, like if you think about the music industry, uh, usually the producers continue to make the royalties more mm -hmm. so than the, the artists, right? Yeah. But now um, the artists, it's really a game changer, not just for the artist, but even for the original fans. I was reading something on Rihanna, I believe, and Rihanna, um, shout out to her, she's like one of the female billionaires in the Jeez. world, incredible entrepreneur, um, that she actually has NFT her music, but now her, um, her fans and her following actually get a percentage of that as well. She set it up in a way that especially her like day ones go and get that reward too. Yeah, so it's all, so. It's all about removing the, the label. So the actual artist becomes the label yes. and earns more money by minting their own music on the blockchain and having fans distribute it for them. That's yeah. what it's all about. It's like getting mass adoption of your, your music. Let the fans do it. Let them reap the benefits of it by advertising your music. Yeah. And you can get paid to do that. That's, That's what the crypto is all about is rewarding the, the people. The people. Yeah. Take it out the middle. That's my favorite thing about crypto and decentralization. So um, that everyone has a fair shot at this. Like anybody can make money, can become a huge artist, talent, whatever it may be. Um, you've just got to have a good idea and it like levels the playing field for everyone. I think well, that's, that's so cool. Yeah. So that, that was two use cases. There's about a dozen use cases. Like uh, another example I give is um, I think Gary Vee is doing something with restaurants and the table and so cool. table, <laughs> NFT in the table in order for you to get a seat at the table. So I, when one day me and my wife a couple years ago were visiting 
uh, Los Angeles, we, we rented a Ferrari, drove it up the coastline, and we wanted to go to Nobu. Nobu in LA, or I think Santa Monica, no. Um, yeah, LA, is like very hard to get seats. Right. Like you have to reserve months at a time. And we went there, we're like, all right, let's just try it out. Let's try to go get a seat. And there was, it was on the ocean, and there's this corner seat on the ocean, like the, most, the best seat in the house. Of course, yeah. Like the, the best, best pictures, the best views, you're in yeah. the corner. And like, we want that, we want that too. So we had to wait, we ordered some appetizers off to the side by the bar, or luckily there's some open room. And the server came up to us, took us wow. to our table, right to the table that That's we wanted. Incredible. So <laughs> that table is a highly uh, sought after table. Yeah. People want that table. Yeah, That's for sure. Now, with the NFT world, it could be on the blockchain as an NFT, and you can actually bid or buy that table. You can buy it as land at the restaurant. Now, everybody that goes to that table, you're going to make money from royalties. You rent it. Hard coded it into the contract, yeah. you can get royalties. So you rent out your table now. It's like buying land in the metaverse. You can also buy land, physical land, and tie it to a, a physical item. And real estate, real estate and NFTs, that's going to be huge. Yeah. Because we've got to have that digital contract there as well. That's another use case. I think real estate and um, crypto in general is. Or blockchain still has a lot, a lot of room to grow. I don't think many people have touched that niche yet. Is there anything that you know about that in that space? Like I know, I know, I know that you can write real estate. You can write any PDF form contract yeah. on the blockchain. So yeah. they can write any contract. Any you know, the HUD could be on the smart contract on Ethereum. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, PDF agreements hard coded into the blockchain, smart chain, smart contracts. I mean, that's not NFTs, but. It's a use case. What about when, uh, like, say, okay, I, I don't really know too much about this side of real estate, but, like, you've got to know what's happened in the past to that building or to that house, whether they've had any damages, mm -hmm. water damages or um, anything to that, that also then would become exactly. within the smart contract where people can't go and modify it and change it because yeah. it's there. So you're always going to understand the history of whatever's happened to that real estate. Yeah, and any, any piece of paper, paper trail, you could put on the blockchain. Yeah. And if you ever want, like paper is hard to find sometimes. Sometimes you misplace it. Sometimes you got a Dropbox full of paperwork and to, to look at your past properties, speaking from uh, existence, that I've done that and I've lost paperwork, I've lost files. And yeah. I wish I could go back to this real estate address and look up every single piece of paperwork I needed for it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the next thing is like right now, NFTs, as we said, are like the hype, the craze and people are buying NFTs left, right, and center and waiting for the price to go up and sell it at crazy millions. But two things, so like, what do you look for when you buy an NFT? And what do you think is gonna happen with all this crazy hype and at the end? And yeah, so we've talked about some real world use cases of it, but let's talk about what's going on right now that you see all over social media, all these 2D images, these pixelated JPEGs. images, <laughs> yeah, JPEGs, and people just coming up with NFT projects out of the blue. So like we went through a phase of like shit coins. We went through a phase of projects coming up, almost like scam projects, shit coins, and oh, projects with real world, no use case. So that's what a coin, you have to see what a coin's use case and utility is. Mm -hmm. It's the same for NFT projects. So when you're when I'm looking into an NFT project, I'm asking myself, okay, what is this? If I hold this NFT, what can I get? Well, what can I use it for? Yeah. It's just like if you hold a coin, what can I get holding this coin, or what could I use this coin for? So I believe that NFT projects, a lot of NFT projects are coming out right now, are just shit coins reborn. <laughs> Literally, the same guys. It's the same people. Move to the hype. That launched. Literally. Any that like all these coins that had a charity aspect. Save the woods, save the flora, flora flowers, save the mountains, save yeah, children, exactly. save save your nuts, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> These nuts. We didn't talk about these nuts. <laughs> a breast cancer, you name it. Like the charity coin aspect, those are all scam coins, yeah. money grabs. So we have that happening now with NFT. So guys, you got to beware. You have to get into the Discord server. You have to see why. What the community is doing, number one, mm -hmm. it has to be a big community, engaged community. Yes, the more people, the better. You got to have like 10, 20,000 people in Discord server, minimum. Yeah. minimum, for a project to even have legs. 
Yeah. And then they got to be very active. And then you got to look at, okay, uh, are, the, are the owners docs? Do we know who they are? Are they doing this for what? Okay, so exactly. we're, we're, one of the main use cases of NFTs is access to a private community, like the, the Bored Apes Yacht Club. So you get access to their example. Yacht Club. Yeah. So people that own, own a Bored Ape get access to private events, private community, meetups, masterminds. It is. It's like elite, the yeah. elite club to be a part of. So if you have a lot of money in crypto, you buy a board ape to get access to other people with a lot of money in crypto. Quickly on that, did you hear about Kylie Jenner being rejected? <laughs> Why is she rejected? So Kylie Jenner found this board ape that she really mm. liked and wanted to buy it off this guy off Twitter. And um, the guy like screenshotted her message to him and was like, oh my God, oh my God, like my life is done. Kylie Jenner wants to buy my NFT. What? Then he blocked her, Why? screenshotted him blocking her and posted it saying for the culture. Wow. Do you think that's genius because that board egg now is going to be like through the roof the price yeah. or that he was an idiot and missed it, a bag? No, I think it's going to go up in value now. I think so too. For the culture. It's going to keep it crypto exactly. people, but she's not a crypto person. She exactly. just, she just has have, money. She just had money. So we, anyway. want, we want like these meetups, these secret meetups, high end, high whales, whales. now get access to network with other whales. Exactly. So that's one really good use Crazy. case that all these NFT projects have. Then. Another one is like your NFT can now be, instead of 2D, you can make it 3D. And now we can put your NFT in the metaverse and yeah. go gamble with the Atari casino. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I met up with, oh, I was trying to chase Nick Gomez the yeah. other day in the Decentraland casino. I was like, wait, Atari casino. Also, um, a, a cool project I just teamed up with, it was something called Sopranos. Everybody heard of the Sopranos? It's an old show. She doesn't even know about it. I do now. So they're, the Sopranos are making NFTs and they're going to be different characters out front of a store with different clothes, different hat, you name it. So um, the Sopranos now gives you access to Club Soprano. Soprano fans want to get access to these events. They want to have VIP experience to yeah, an wow. event, to a red carpet event that's for Sopranos fans. Mm -hmm. You're also going to win Tony Soprano's SUV. You could... Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's the main use case is getting whitelisted. You get there first, you get VIP. Crazy. So whoever owns, and then, then you can collect the Sopranos, like you can put a collection of all the, the team together, like the cast. If yeah. you own one of each of the cast, you have a collection. Now that guarantees you some access to something sure, else. And it's worth more money. Wow. Guys, you're hearing it. NFTs, but obviously you've got to do the research behind it yes. and make sure that you're getting into legit ones because I think just like you said, like, you know, shit coins, they went up, 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 like crazy, but then just wait till- And people still fall on the shit coins. I know, I keep hearing Shiba, Shiba, Shiba. It was don't, literally don't, don't. at the top and it, people were telling me to buy it. And I was like, why would I buy when it's at its peak? You don't buy at the top. But, so be careful, do your research always. Even when we said, do your own research, we don't recommend anything, um, cause that's really important. Final words to the people, what would you tell them? Do your own research. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag D-Y-O-R. <laughs> Guys, uh, this is, uh, in this industry, you could lose money, but you can make a lot of money. Hell so yeah. I don't advise anybody to ape in to a project just as we talk about it. A lot of people do that. I'm guilty of it. Me too. But do your own research. Research the project. Look how many community members, how active, what is the utility? What is the use case? Yeah. And uh, you make an education, educated decision yourself. Exactly. As per with any investment, the number one thing they say is to get the education, which yeah. is absolutely key. And that's why I've lost money in the past when I was uneducated. Speaking I have no of, idea what I was Speaking doing. of education. Speaking of education, you guys can hit us up in the links below. Um, you can get involved with our education team that we have because um, that's what we want to do. We want to educate others because that's what made the really big difference for us from when we didn't understand anything to yeah. now. Uh, we really understand a lot more of what we're doing. Yeah. So we have a private community. Obviously it's a paid community. Maybe you can buy one of our NFTs to get access, but we have educators we learn, and I learned from these educators as well. There's about a dozen educators that teach every single day anything from decentralized finance to NFTs to Bitcoin to XRP, different, different trade ideas, you name it. Want to get into the crypto? So. so, if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe so that you get notifications as well for the next video that will come out.